What is going on guys? Chris here or Mighty Furtado and today we're going to be taking a look at the February 10th Heroes of the Storm closed beta patch. This is the Lost Vikings patch. It came out today and it is playable on the uh, actual client right now. So we're going to go over the patch. Uh, going to try to do this as quick as possible while giving some information, uh, some valuable information regarding the patch notes. So uh, let's get this started. So um, with the new patch today, a uh, new hero has been announced. Uh, the Lost Vikings, Olaf, Balog, and Eric just fell through the Nexus portal. Uh, in general, the Lost Vikings are three heroes in one. So a quick description of all three of them. Olaf has lots of health, regener regenerates health quickly, and charges uh, charges to slow enemies. Uh, Balog deals splash damage to enemies behind his uh, attack target. And then Eric moves faster than the other Vikings and has a longer attack range. Uh, each Viking can move in attack uh, and be killed separately. They will also receive individual spawn timers on death. Uh, use the activated talent hotkeys 1, 2, and 3 to select and control Vikings individually or press 4 to guide them as a group. Uh, so their basic abilities, uh, the Lost Viking basic abilities may be unlocked through talent selection. So you don't get all the talents when you get to level to, when you start the game. You actually unlock them individually from level 4, 7, and 16. So the first one, Spin to Win, deals damage around each Viking, and that can be unlocked at level 4. Uh, jump, all Vikings become temporarily, temporarily invulnerable, and that's unlocked at level 7. And then Norse Force, all Vikings gain a temporary shield, uh, that can be unlocked at level 16. So they don't actually have a mount to all characters except for a certain one, such as Falstead, Brightwing, uh, Abathur, and a couple other ones don't have a mount. So what the Vikings have... And replace for that, the Vikings game gain increased movement speed for a few seconds, and it's called Go Go Go. Uh, their trait is a fast restart. Death timer is reduced for the Lost Vikings, and their heroic abilities, which is their ultimates. Their first one is Play Again. All Vikings are revived and teleported to the Summon Summoning Viking. And then their second one is a Longboat Raid. Summon a Longboat and go in a Viking Raid. Uh, so a couple changes have been made to the user interface. Uh, though the Team League is not available in this patch. Those who have reached uh, player level 40 will earn a new progression reward, so a new portrait, I guess, uh, when that fully comes out. In-game communication. Uh, it is now possible to view recent uh, in-game chat messages by opening the chat box uh, to type a new message. Only the most recent mes messages will be displayed in this way. Uh, additional improvements will, be, uh, will arrive in the future updates. Uh, so they have disabled further, uh, they've disabled the emote menu. So you can't press Y to say well played. Um, missing like the pinging options and the ability to send GG messages to opponents in the middle uh, moments after the court is destroyed. So they have uh, disabled that. Uh, quest log, there's actually a new uh, quest log button at the bottom right hand screen that you're actually able to see your three quests or how, how many quests you have. Uh, so they've revamped the player profile and I'll actually show you guys a video of that uh, so you guys don't have to see me reading this and you guys will see uh, what it looks like. I'll go through everything that's changed and the way that the interface actually looks like. Well, not the main inter interface, but the actual player profile and the quest log. So uh, I really don't have to read that. It just uh, states a bunch of information that has been changed, which is actually really cool. Uh, penalties for leaving games. They have uh, strictened, I guess, penalties for people who've DC'd. So the tracking penalties for leaving in progress quick matches and hero league games before they are finished have changed. Leaving multiple hero or quick league matches games without reconnecting will now flag the player to receive the following penalties. The, uh, the flag player will be disallowed from queuing for hero league games until a quick match game is played to completion. Leaving additional games early will cause the number of quick matches game required to increase. This is actually a really cool thing that I like. So... Uh, if you leave a Hero League match, you have to play a quick match, and if you leave that quick match, uh, you have to keep playing more until you can play Hero League again. But if you keep leaving additional games early, they'll make the quick matches increase. So if you leave two Hero games, two Hero League games more, then you have to play more quick matches, is what I'm guessing. Uh, when queuing for a quick match, the flag player will be teamed up uh, with other flag players who have similarly left games early. That's actually really cool. Uh, the system will track players' recent games. If a player has not left any game prematurely for some time, then leaving a single game for reasons outside the player's control will not trigger these penalties. Uh, when a player who is flagged for leaving games early joins a party, the entire party will also become subject to those penalties. Uh, that's something I'm not too comfortable with because unless he kind of tells the other players, okay, guys, guess what? You know, I have a penalty on my account for a certain amount of games or X amount of games. Uh, 
it kind of it's kind of stupid to punch the other players, which kind of sucks. Uh, but please note this will not cause party members to be pl uh, flagged individually. These penalties will be lifted from the party once a flag player either completes the requirements noted above or leaves the party. So isn't that the exact same thing though? Please note that this will not cause party members to be flagged individually. So they won't be flagged indi individually, but when a player joins the party, uh, the entire the entire party uh, also becomes subject to these penalties. So it, it's just kind of confusing and kind of stupid. Uh, I don't really agree with this, but you know it's their game. Uh, unless more people speak out about it, then they really will just keep it the same. Uh, so enough about that. It's just penalties in general. Uh, so they kept, they changed a couple of artwork in the game structures. The court now displays a shield impact facts uh, effects when attacked. So changed a couple things here. Uh, the falling unit received updated animations. So the Sky Temple bosses, Garden Terrors, Grave Golem, Siege, and Bruiser mechanics. They have received a bunch of animations. Uh, Watchtowers on the Sky Temple have received updated art. Uh, blah blah blah. Heroes Mountain skin, so Hearthstone uh, being has changed visually. A number of in-game hero portraits have, have received additional polish. Uh, dance, victory, and taunt and animations have been added to a number of heroes, which is cool, kind of cool. Obviously, they don't display the heroes, which kind of sucks. Uh, Kerrigan has received new ability icon art. The following heroes month skins uh, that they have changed, so Elder Chen and its variations. Granty Murky. Uh, Janus skins and all variations have received minor updates and then several hero and hero skins have received animation polish and as you can see these are the ones listed below. Several hero skins have received new art for certain abilities which uh, more closely match the skins theme. Obviously these are skins for heroes and they've changed the way that they looked or new art for certain abilities. Several hero abilities and talents have received visual updated effects, and a number of summoned units have received visual updates and polish. Uh, so Nubarak Scraps, are the Schools, that's kind of cool. Uh, so Shop, they've added a new bundle. The bundle packs, the Pajama Party Lost Vikings bundle has been added to in-game shop for a limited time, and then head uh, here for more details regarding the current bundles that are in the shop. So the Lost Vikings have been added to the in-game shop, and a Master Skin has been added for the Lost Vikings, and the Pajama Party Lost Vikings skin has been added to the shop. Uh, sound, the following hero skins have received unique dialogue effects, and the following heroes and hero skins have received its sound effect updates. Uh, design and gameplay, a loss of control channel bar will now appear when heroes are silenced as to, as they do with stuns. Murky and the loss of Viking de uh, deaths are now represented in 0 0.25 increments on the score screen as killing Murky or one of the lost Viking are worth 25% of normal XP amount earned by killing another hero. Uh, battlegrounds, collecting various battleground items, the balloons, skulls, seeds, regeneration globes should now be more responsive. That's actually kind of cool, I guess. Uh, structures, the core is now invulnerable until both keep and fort in a single lane are destroyed. So if you're in the middle lane on, let's say, uh, Black Arts Bay, the keep as well as the fort has to be destroyed in one single lane before the core is actually uh, able to be attacked. This is now consistent with the way in which the catapult minions are spawned. Uh, walls. Vision provided by walls are reduced by approximately 15%. Uh, talent. This is actually a really big change to some of the heroes. All heroes, including Murky and the Lost Vikings, now count as full credit toward talents, which require hero kills, such as Gathering Power. So when you kill Murky, so if you're playing Nova and you have Gathering Power, uh, if you were to kill Murky, you get full credit for it. So uh, the maximum number of um, uh, stacks you can get on Gathering Power is three. So if you kill Murky once, that counts as one stack. If you kill him another two more times, that counts as the full three stacks. So Swift Storm has been removed. Uh, Rewind, this is actually a really big change for some heroes such as Kerrigan. I think Falstead has it, but I think they removed it from Falstead in the previous patch. Uh, Brightwing also had uh, Rewind. It has been moved from level 13 to 20, so now it's a uh, level 20 upgrade that you can get. Uh, it has been removed from many heroes. So the only ones that it's found on the following heroes are Nubarak, Arthas. Um, they actually put it on Arthas now. Uh, Brightwing has it still, Nova has it, I believe they were actually removed it from her two patches ago in the Jaina patch, so they brought it back on Nova, um, Malfurion has it now, Murden has it now, Murky has it, Tassadar, Tyrant, uh, Tyrand, Rhaegar, and Sarah Tool. so they removed it from Kerrigan, which is kind of a big blow to her, uh, but four new talents have been added at level 20 for a number of heroes, so the four new talents are Nexus Blade, Nexus Blades provides 20% increased attack damage and basic attacks slow enemies by 20 seconds for one second and it's found on the following five heroes, Illidan, Kerrigan, Sonya, Thrall, Tyriel, uh, and Zeratul. 
Nexus Frenzy increases both attack speed and basic attack range by 20%. And it's found on the following heroes, Jaina, Raynor, Sergeant Hammer, Tychus, Tyrant, and Vala. So basically your uh, main range assassins. Hardened Shield activate to reduce all incoming hero uh, or damage by 75% for 40 seconds. It has a 60 second cooldown. It's found on Anubrak, Arthas, Chent, ETC, Gazlo, Muradin, Sonia, Stitches, and Tyrael. So basically your tanks of the game get this upgrade. Uh, Fury of the Storm, every 5 seconds the next, the next basic attack will deal an additional 200 damage to the primary target and 500 damage to the nearby uh, minion or mercenary found on the following heroes, Gazlo, Nazebo, Sergeant Hammer, the Lost Vikings, and Zagara. So, Caldown Mule has been nerfed slightly, multiple mules can no longer repair the same structure, duration reduced from 60 seconds to 40 seconds, so it's only up 40 seconds, but the cooldown still remains at 60 seconds. Uh, mules now restore ammunition ammunition more quickly, so it's a little buffed to them there. But the mule's health uh, is now 140 plus 43 per level, then uh, rather than remaining at 500 health for the duration of the match. So I think it got a little nerf. I've never really used mule on any of the characters that actually have it, so I'm not too sure if that's actually really good or really bad for him. Uh, Gathering power actually got a nerf this patch, so more nerfs to Nova. Uh, initial ability power amount reduced from 8% to 5%. Maximum ability power bonus reduced from 20% to 15%. Ice block got a little buff in this patch. Uh, ice block was used, I think Jaina had it. I've only seen it used on Jaina, but I know a couple other heroes actually had it. Ability cooldowns will now continue to run and persistent ores will continue to take effect throughout ice block's duration. This was added with the previous patch. Uh, Regeneration Master now grants four health regeneration upon uh, learning the talent. So here are the hero changes. A lot of people obviously are, are more interested in the hero changes. I have to sneeze, but I'll try to talk. Uh, I missed it. All right. Uh, so Abathur, Evolve Monstrosity. Minion stack bonus increased from 4% to 5% health and damage. Uh, monstrosity health increased from 600 uh, plus 60 per level to 600 plus 72 per level. Uh, monstrosity now takes 50% less damage from minions and structures. So obviously they uh, found out that a lot of people weren't using it. So I believe they were, they were using the ultimate evolution, which uh, makes Abathur clone another hero in the game. But they nerfed it a little bit by taking away the ability to use the alt on, the, on that uh, champion. So I believe they buffed the evolved monstrosity. Which is pretty good. Uh, not a lot of people were using it. I think the only time you would use Evolve Monstrosity is when you were uh, kind of playing Abathur as a sieging uh, hero to you know push down a lane. So that's actually pretty good for him. Uh, Nubarak got a little buff to him. Uh, basic attack, Locust Needles. Talent damage increased from 35 to 50%. His impale stun duration increased from, uh, or decreased. So I got a little nerf here Went from 1.25 to one second. Uh, hardened carapace, his W persistent uh, carapace talent duration bonus increased from two to three seconds. And then the shield bonus has been reduced from 50 to 40%. Uh, burrow charge is when he goes underground and burrows from underneath to go on top. Cooldown increased from 14 to 16%. And then epicenter, epic center, epicenter. Impact area and damage bonus reduced from 100% to 85, so it's a little nerf there. Uh, Web Blast, which is his ultimate, duration increased from 5 to 8 seconds. Cooldown has been increased from 45 to 60 seconds, and his Creep Wave Talent, which you unlock, I believe, at level 20, now channels for 4 seconds to increase the duration of Web Blast for 4 seconds, usable once per Web Blast cast. Uh, Arthur's got a pretty big nerf this patch, and uh, one quick note that I want to I want to talk about. I think the main reason they're nerfing some of these. Uh, All right, so continue on. So um, one quick note that I want to add uh, for these tanks that I believe that they're starting to nerf is um, a lot of people, uh, such as myself, were complaining that tanks are doing about the same amount of damage as range assassins, such as Tychus and Vala. So what I think that they're doing to some of these tanks is they're reducing their damage number scale or their uh, scaling and damaging, they're reducing it so they don't do as much damage as ranged assassins. Because, you know, when you think about ranged assassins, okay, they're all about damage, but they're squishy, so you can easily take them out. So with tanks, I, the way that I felt when I first started playing heroes, that tanks are doing a lot of damage. They shouldn't be doing this much damage. Ranged assassins or anybody else should be doing more damage than the tank. So what they are trying to do, what I think they're trying to do, is reduce the amount of damage that they're able to do as tanks, but kind of increase their defenses so they're actually able to stay a lot more. 
but obviously when you have more people focusing the single target, then it'll die easily. So Envenom talent has been removed. I think you got that at level four. Four you got Envenom. Uh, Frozen Waste talent moved from level one to level four, and Eternal Hunter talent moved from level four to level one. So basic attack, Ruin tap talent, heal amount reduced from level four to uh, he'll reduce from 4% 4% to 3% of his maximum health. Uh, Frostmourne Hungers, which is his trait, search radius increased by 25%. His death coil mana cost decreased from 55 to 50, which is pretty good. Uh, Howling Blast mana cost decreased from 75 to 70, pretty good as well. Uh, his Frost Persistence talent cooldown reduction increased from 2 to 3 seconds. And then his Frozen Tempest uh, mana drain increased from 12 to 15%, so a little nerf there. Uh, radius increased by approximately 15%, which is pretty good. Uh, initial damage per second has been increased. So he's doing more damage. They're, uh, you know, they're increasing what it costs more, but they're increasing the actual uh, the damage and the radius of it, which is actually cool. And the scaling damage has been increased from three to four. Uh, frozen wastes. Uh, talent no longer increases frozen tempest's radius. Now decreases frozen tempest uh, mana cost by three seconds. Uh, Biting Cold Talent no longer increases Frozen Tempest mana cost. Scaling damage uh, has been increased from 5.5 to 6. So his second uh, hero talent or heroic ability summons Cinder Grossa. Cooldown has been decreased from 90 to, 90 to 80 seconds. Slow duration on heroes talent from 3 to 4 seconds. And then Absolute Zero, which is the upgrade that you can actually get, uh, has been increased from 1.5 to 2 seconds. So basically a 0.5 increase for both of them. Army of the Dead, which is the one that everybody has been taking, cooldown has been increased by 10 seconds. The initial ghoul healing reduced by 150 to 104. That's about 36, if I... No, that's horrible math. 46. It's about 46 uh, heal, so you're losing about 46 HP now. Uh, Skill and ghoul heal reduced from 30 to 24. And then the Legend of North, Ren North End talent ghoul duration bonus changed from 50% to a 5 second increase. So basically, it's just changing. Uh, it lasts about five seconds more, and it now increases the ghouling, the ghoul's heals by twenty five percent. So it's about uh, twenty five percent of one of four. Uh, that's about twenty one seconds or twenty one. So you're getting about a hundred and thirty. So yeah, it's about a, your heals are being or right now one hundred and thirty. Uh, so Brightwing got a little nerf to some of his stuff, but not totally. His starting health decreased from 775 to 750, so it's about 15, 25% difference. Uh, scaling heal has decreased from 140 to 130. Rewind talent has been removed from level 13. Excuse me, from level 13 to 20. Bolt of the Storm talent has been removed. Phase shift cooldown increased from 30 seconds to 45. His phase shield talent uh, shield scaling increased from 25 to 50 per level. His polymorph mana costs have been increased by 15, and then his pixie dust buff duration increased from 4 to 3 seconds, movement speed bonus decreased from 25 to 20, uh, anything else here, cooldown decreased from 12 to 2, so it's a uh, 2 second buff there, and then the mana cost has been reduced from 75 to 16, which is actually really cool, and block charges grant reduced from 2 to 1. Uh, so Chen got a couple changes here. The color of Chen's brew resource bar has been changed to yellow before it was blue, so it kind of looked like mana. Uh, it's actually kind of cool how they're changing it because Chen doesn't run on mana, he runs on brew. It's, you know, obviously different than mana. Uh, so it's kind of cool little change that they did there. Swift Reflex's talent moved from level 7 to 4. His basic attack, attack speed, has been increased by 11%. Uh, the last drop talent removed. Bottomless Monk talent has been removed from level 4 to level 1. His Chug talent has been moved from level 4 to 16. Combat Stance talent moved from 16 to 7. Uh, starting Brew Regeneration increased from 30 to 40 Brew per second upon activation. And Boulder Flavor talents moved from 7 to 15. Shield Regeneration rate and maximum shield amount increased by 33 to 40%. Uh, Brewmaster's Balance Trait Health Regeneration bonus increased from 5 to 10, uh, 1.5 per level. Movement Speed has been increased by 5%. Uh, health regeneration and speed uh, bonuses have been swapped. While at, while at below 50 brew, gain 20% uh, movement speed. While uh, at or above 50 brew, generate an additional 10 plus 1.5 health per second. Uh, one thing I don't like really is the chug. It's been uh, moved from level 4 to 16. 
Uh, I believe Chug was the ability that made it so you are able to get more brew faster. So it kind of sucks that he's not able to get it at level 4 anymore, but they have changed Bottomless Mug uh, from level 4 to level 1. So hopefully that kind of makes up for it. Uh, Flying Kick, the Deadly Strike talent has moved from level 1 to level 4. I don't think anybody really picked Deadly Strike at level 1, so that's a pretty cool change there. Uh, pressure Point talent moved from level 7 to 16. Uh, it no longer roots the target though for one second and set applies a 90% slow for one second. Um, I don't I don't know if that's a big change. Rooting the target really helped in kind of going for an initiation. So it kind of sucks that that's a little nerf, but 90% slow, I don't think it's going to make a really big difference. I still think it's a pretty good initiation uh, for team fights. Uh, combination attack, talent attack. Damage bonus decreased from 200% to 100%. I believe that was after every uh, flying kick that you did, you did an increased amount of damage. So that kind of sucks. It's a pretty pretty big nerf to him right there. That's kind of what made Chen really strong for a tank. But like I said in the beginning, what they're trying to do with tanks is reducing the, the amount of damage that they're doing and actually making them more of an actual tanky type character. Uh, keg smash, uh, keg smash uh, moved from level, or his keg toss has been moved from level 16 to 7, and the range bonus has been reduced from 200 to 125. Breath of fire com combustion has been removed. Deep breath increases uh, f uh, for fire breath's range and arc change from 20 to 30 percent, and ring of fire damage scaling has been reduced by 0.5. Storm earth fire elemental conduit spirit damage life decreased from 5 to 4 seconds, and then spirit gen regeneration cooldown decrease from nine to four seconds well so yeah like i said what they're doing with these tanks is they're nerfing the damage that they're doing because it's uh what a lot of people were seeing including myself is that they are doing as much if not not they're not doing more damage than assassin but they're doing damage comparable to assassins and it's not really what you want to go for when you're playing as a tank uh so diablo his scaling damage has been increased by four his shadow charge, the pushback distance on target is now consistent, which should allow for more fluid combos with overpower. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, can now be used on structures without potentially landing inside of them. Fire stomp, which was his W, obviously it's his W, now orients according to uh, cardinal directions with respect to the direction that Diablo is currently facing. The number of fire waves created by fire stomp has been reduced from 10 to 8, so obviously a little, ner little nerf there. Overpower issuing additional commands after casting overpower should now be more, much more responsive. Illidan Executioner talent has been removed. I believe that was the talent that gave you, you did more damage uh, if they were disabled, if they had some sort of CC on them, like a slow or they were stunned. Uh, so Kerrigan Executioner also, also did get removed. Her Ravage Q uh, healing amount has been increased by 5% of maximum health. Her impaling blades have her starting damage has been reduced by 15, and the scaling damage of it has been increased by 2. Her primal glass uh, grasp basic damage tick has been increased by 3, and her scaling damage tick has been increased by let's see the math there uh, 45, 65 uh, no 55. It's been increased by 55. Uh, Murden, Stormbolt, Sledgehammer, 400% damage bonus now also affects mercenaries, and his Haymaker casting time slightly reduced. Haymaker was the one that pushes the target and it makes that bowling ball effect. Murky, Murky will now lose kill streak flames anytime he is killed, even if his egg has been placed prior to death. Gathering power talent has been removed from Murky. Spawn egg, egg placement cooldown reduced from 45 to 20 seconds, so I guess that's a little buff there. The amount of time, uh, Murky egg is revealed after his egg has been killed, has been increased from 10 to 15 seconds. So you'll, you're able to see Murky for 15 seconds now. Uh, spawn egg placement cooldown after Murky egg is destroyed has been decreased from 20 to 15 seconds. So if they destroy the egg, you can now place it 15 seconds instead of 20. His W talent moved from level 7 to 16. Compromised air talent moved from 13 to 7. And Wrath of Cod moved from 16 to 13. His safety bubble, his rejuvenation bubble, now restores 50% of his health rather than all of his health. A pretty big nerf there to him. A lot of people were running uh, rejuvenation bubble. Um, I haven't played Murky that much. I probably only played like one or two games, so I really have no comment on the changes over here. But what I saw on the Heroes of the Storm subreddit is that a lot of people were complaining about it, which kind of sucks. Obviously, those people uh, were big-time Murky fans. Rainer got a bunch of changes, which is actually really exciting because... 
Uh, Rainer is one of those ranged assassins that nobody plays unless you're starting out the game. So hopefully with these changes, a lot of people will be playing him uh, from now on. So Rainer has received a significant talent update. Searing Attacks talent has been removed. Mercenary Lord talent has been added at level 7. So his new talent at level 1, Rainer's Recruitment. This is an improve, improved version of bribe talent that requires only 15 stacks to a bribe mercenary instead of 20. Uh, so it's just been an improved version of bribe. Uh, so you have to kill 15 instead of 20 to get one stack. Which is pretty cool. It's a little uh, upgrade to uh, to Rainer there. It kind of upgrades, or it doesn't really upgrade from Bribe, but it's a upgraded ability from Bribe. If you get what I'm saying, hopefully you do. Uh, new talent at level 16, Relentless Leader. Rainer gave, gains 15%, 50% crowd control reduction. Additionally, once every five seconds, Rainer will knock back uh, nearby enemies if he becomes stunned. That's pretty cool. New talent at level 20, a card to play. Rainer's heroic ability cooldown is reduced by 10 seconds whenever an, an hero, ally, or enemy ally or enemy is killed. So if one of your allies or enemies is dead, his heroic ability is reduced by 10 seconds. That's pretty cool. Uh, I, I don't know if I don't know if that's gonna be cool or not. Even though I said it's gonna be pretty cool, but like I don't know if that's gonna be good or not. That's what I meant. Uh, leaf from the front trait has been removed. Advanced optics new talent has been converted into Rainer's new trait. So now also increases Rainer's vision by 10%. And the new talent for level 13 put in on a clinic reduces ability cooldowns by 1.5 seconds whenever an enemy has received uh, that was recently damaged by Rainer is destroyed. So um, if I get this right, his ability cooldowns, which is his W. It's Q, W, and E if the E is activated because that's his passive. Uh, it goes down by 1.5 seconds whenever an enemy that was recently damaged by Raynor is destroyed. So if it's a, a minion, that actually sounds really fucking good. I think a lot of people are going to get that. Uh, basic a attack damage reduced from 40 to 35. Um, I don't agree with that. Uh, that's That's a really stupid change. Why would they reduce his damage? He wasn't doing that much damage at the start. I I don't know if I agree with that change, though. It's about... What is that? Not 15. 5. It's about 5. It's not that big, but, like... I don't, I don't know why they would reduce it. It kind of sucks, but... Uh, penetrating round, which is this Q. New talent for level 4. Penetration rounds cooldown is reduced by 4 seconds upon striking an enemy hero. Um, upon impact, uh, penetrating round slows enemy by 20% for 3 seconds. And then double barreled penetrating round becomes charge base with a maximum of 2 charges. Well, you can actually do it 2 times. That's pretty cool. His W attack uh, damage bonus has been removed. Attack speed bonus increased from 15 to 25%. Nearby allies still benefit from 50% of this bonus. No longer visually scales up to minions and mercenaries. So, I guess minions and mercenaries don't get this. Um, new talents for level 13, Steel Resolve, increases Inspire's duration by 50% and causes Adrenaline Rush to automatically apply Inspire. Uh, adrenaline, 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 I can't even say it. Adrenaline Rush, activated Rush, talent uh, moved from 13 uh, to level 4 and no longer requires activation in order to reduce the cooldown of Adrenaline Rush. Cooldown reduced, uh, lowered from 15 to 10 seconds. Hyperion, Battle Hyperion talent has been removed. New now starts when the Yamato cannon uh, effect that was pre previously granted by a Battle Hyperion talent. An additional set of lasers continually blast the ground, dealing area effect damage, so it just has an additional uh, change to it. That Rainer's does Raider's damage. Damage. This heroic ability now requires a target before it can cast. Rainer's Banshees can now be retargeted by pressing R and clicking enemy, or uh, issued move commands by pressing R and clicking the Terran. If their target dies, the Banshees will attempt to acquire a new target nearby, preferring heroes. If Raynor dies, the Banshees will tra travel to the nearest lane to help push. Uh, new talent, level 20, Dusk Wings. Banshees remain cloaked while firing and fire 50% more frequently. Okay, so that's not bad changes to Raynor. Um, reducing his basic attack damage, I don't really agree with. But I'm not too sure how well these new talent changes are going to help him. I feel like he's going to be doing more damage. But I'll have to give it a shot. And I'll try to make an update video uh, later this week regarding these new changes. So Rhaegar, Earthbind Totem, no longer roots the target for one second. Instead 
applies a 90% slow for one second. This is the exact same change that they made to uh, Chen, which was his flying kick. No longer roots the target, but now applies a 90% slow for one second. Which is, you know, it's alright. I'm not really a support player, but it's a little nerf to Rhaegar, but I don't think it's going to be a big, big nerf that's going to harm him. Uh, Bullhead Mind's talent enemies are not, are now knocked back slightly farther, but only the center of the three Spider Minds will knock the target back. Uh, Sonya got a couple changes here. The color of Sonya's furry resource bar has been changed to orange. Uh, Ferocious Healing activated talent. Uh, furry cost upon activation increased from 10 to 20. Her basic attack damage has been increased from 38 to 40, so it's a 2 damage increase. Uh, furry Treat. Furry generated basic attack uh, increased from four to six. Uh, her generated um, her furry fury generated upon taking damage increased from one to two. Shot of fury talent fury regenerated upon activation increased uh, from twenty five to fifty, so twenty five percent or twenty five change there. Ancient spear furry regeneration. Why do I say furry? Fury fury regeneration increased from twenty to forty. Seismic slam cost has been increased by ten. And Furacious Blow damage has been increased by 10% and increases the Fury cost from 5 to 10. Her will, uh, Whirlwind has been increased from 30 to 50. And her Wrath of the Berserker uh, cooldown has been increased by 15. Damage bonus has been increased by 10. And the duration increased by 5 seconds. So it's going to do a little bit more damage. Um... Hopefully, yeah, the damage has is going to be increased by 10%, so it's going to do a lot of damage, but the cooldown is increased by 15%, which isn't really that big of a change. Uh, Fury required to extend Wrath of Berserker's duration increased from 4 to 10. Uh, so Stitches, his Q got a little nerfed by 2 seconds. His Gorge damage reduced from 200 to 100. So like I said, they're reducing the amount of damage that they're doing, kind of making them more uh, as a tank. Throg just got his Battle Momentum Talent removed. And in Tychus, Commander Odin, the functionality of Commander Odin has been changed significantly. Uh, the Odin's health title, total will now be set to Tychus' current health at the time the Commander Odin is cast. Wait. Okay, so... Okay, that kind of scared me because what I thought what they meant by this is whatever Tychus' health is, when Odin spawns, is, is, is what it's going to be. But it's actually his total health will now be Odin's uh, health. Tychus will now die if... The Odin is destroyed. Whoa. Whoa, that's a big nerf right there. So Tychus will now die if the Odin is destroyed while he is piloting it. That kind of sucks. The Odin no longer has a 50% crowd control reduction. So, a lot of people were saying in the previous patch that Tychus kind of now beat Vala in tier list. But with that little nerf, I think that kind of brings it back down, honestly. <sighs> that nerf to Odin, it kind of sucks. Wow, I, I don't know what to think of that, actually. Um, but, like, you kind of look at it. You know, if Tychus' health is like 4,000 at level 20, that means Odin's going to have uh, 4,000 HP. But, you know, you're still able to attack Odin. When it, like it's take, it takes a couple seconds for Odin to actually come up to be fully functional. So it kind of does suck. So it means you have to use Odin far away from the team fights. Uh, range it, uh, his range has been increased by approximately 30%. His attack speed has been increased by 9%. But his uh, basic attack damage has been decreased for uh, from about 7 uh, damage. His Annihilate scaling damage has been increased from 13 to 18 per level. His Ragnarok missiles... Oh, this is a... Uh, Oh, wait, this is Odin. Okay, I thought this was actually Tychus. So, his basic attack range has been increased by 30%. Okay, that's pretty good. His attack speed has also been increased by 9%. His Annihilate damage increased. Uh, Ragnarok missiles target uh, pointed damage and slows enemies in a nearby area. So, he now has a new ability. Thrusters dash in a uh, target direction. Uh, and then Big Red Button Talent, the one that you get at level 20. This talent no longer grants nuclear blasts as a separate ability. Instead, Ragnarok uh, Missiles now also launches a nuclear missile at a target location in, in addition to its other effects. So instead of Ragnarok Missiles, 
Instead, Ragnar Missiles now also launches a nuclear missile at the target location in addition to its other effects. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, because obviously with the ability for thrusters, uh, they changed it. So, um, overall with Odin, I feel like being able to kill Odin now means that Tychus also dies. It's a nerf, but they've increased his damage to a point where everybody's going to have to focus Odin now. So, I kind of like it, but I kind of don't like it. So, we'll have to see how that's going to play out in, uh, in Ranked. So Tyriel Righteousness, his W move, uh, his an Angelic Absorption has been moved from level 4 to 13. Healing increased from 10 to 20, uh, each second for 3 seconds. And his Smite Damage Bonus has been decreased by 5%. Uh, Zeratul Executioner Talent has also been removed, uh, rendering Cleave Talent moved from level 7 to 16. Void uh, Slash Talent moved from level 16 to 7. And Void Prison now pauses Capture Points. Uh, mercenary camps, watchtowers, dragon shines, wild paws, these points cannot be captured. This was actually uh, a change that really anybody asked for, but I guess Blizzard found this as a problem. Uh, you guys have probably seen a lot of videos where you're playing, um, or you, you, when you're playing against a zero tool and you're capturing like a boss or something, um, and he goes to, you know, he uses Void Prison and he just jumps in and captures it. Basically, he can no longer do that anymore. Uh, it was funny for a lot of videos, but I guess Blizzard found that as a problem, so they kind of nerfed it a little bit, which is actually really good for people going up against Zero Tool. You don't really have to uh, worry about it. It kind of gives uh, the enemy Zero Tool enough time to get to send his teammates up to help him, which is actually a pretty good thing. So a couple bug fixes here. I don't think I need to, anything too big. Um, but you know, if people want to check it out, I'll leave a link down in the description. So, a couple of big changes here. Obviously, Tychus, uh, Commander Odin is one of them. Uh, Sonya is another one. I feel like a lot of people are going to start playing Sonya now, which is pretty good. Uh, the Raynor changes, really big here. I'm going to have to make a separate video for that uh, regarding some of these changes and the updated build for Raynor. Uh, let me see. Is there anything else? Chen, yeah, a couple changes here. The Chen, obviously, making him more... Uh, making him less damagey, but making him kind of more tankier. Uh, same thing goes for Arthas, you know. Like I said, it's actually a really good thing because uh, me and a couple of buddies are actually talking about this. Um, when they first started playing Heroes of the Storm 2, they found out that tanks were doing a lot of damage. So it's kind of cool that Blizzard is actually kind of reducing the amount of damage that tanks do and kind of, them making, kind of making them more tankier, which is actually a really cool thing. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's going to be it for the patch breakdown for February 10th. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. A lot of changes. Obviously, I'll be making a separate video uh, for the things that I mentioned in this video. I'll also put annotations and timestamps at the bottom of the description if you don't want to hear me talk about a certain thing. You know, I'll kind of make it quicker. It'll make it quicker for you guys to jump to a certain part of the video so you don't have to hear me ramble about the whole thing. But if, obviously, if you guys want to, you can. So, anyways, guys, this is Chris or Mike Furtado. Hopefully, you enjoyed the patch breakdown for February 10th, the, um, the uh, Lost Vikings. Or, yeah, the Lost Vikings patch. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the new patch. You know, if you have any concerns or comments regarding the, the patches that came out this week, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll try my try my best to answer them. And, uh, you know, we can have a discussion regarding some of the changes. But anyways, guys, I'll see you later. Take it easy. Peace out.